Today on The Novelizers, the 13 Emmy Award-winning mortal behind the Twitter account Tweet of God and writer of the Broadway play An Act of God, David Jabberbaum. Plus, an interview with Laura Kraft. It's The Novelizers. Don't want your popcorn, don't want your milk duds, don't want my shoes stuck in pools of sticky cola. Don't show me romance, don't show me fist fights, just show me words pretty loud. Welcome to The Novelizers, the podcast where we take classic films, then get comedy writers to turn them into funny books, which are then narrated by actors and comedians. Decades ago, a little movie hit the theater starring Keanu Reeves that was way ahead of its time. It shook the world and made audiences question the universe and our place in it, even the nature of space and time. That movie was called Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Then a couple years later, Keanu starred in another movie called The Matrix, where the world was just a giant simulation run by evil computers. Is the world just a giant simulation? Christine, Kevin, what do we think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Christine, simulation? Uh, yeah, yeah. We're probably a simulation at this 50, point. 50? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's too much crazy shit going on every day to think there's not some sort of uh, simulation here, right? <laughs> Before we dive into today's chapter, Kevin, what has happened in the movie so far? Where are we in The Matrix? All right. So the cops at this point, the cops are running in to catch Trinity. Agent Smith tells them they won't succeed. I mean, he's trying to let them know. Then Trinity fights the cops, whoops their ass. She has kung fu superpowers. Then she gets pulled out just in time. Haven't even met Keanu yet. Amazing. Okay. Well, let's uh, find out what happens next in our story. But first... Here at the Novelizers podcast, we see ourselves kind of like Morpheus's ragtag gang of rebels. Instead of a giant evil matrix, we're fighting against boredom. But we don't do it with our hacking skills. We do it by novelizing movies in a funny way. And just like in The Matrix, there is a chosen one, and that chosen one is you. But you don't win this war by taking a bunch of pills and learning kung fu. You do it by donating a buck a month, or maybe five if you're Keanu, to our Patreon page. So fulfill your destiny. Look up the Novelizers on Patreon today. Chip in a little money and keep our rebel group of novelizers going. Plus, you could leave us a good review wherever you're listening to this podcast. And thank you. Now let's get back to the story. Today's chapter was novelized and narrated by David Javerbaum. He's done everything. Been the head writer of The Daily Show with Jon Stewart. He's written for Beavis and Butthead and James Corden. He created the Twitter account The Tweet of God with over 6 million followers. It's more than some religions. And like the actual God did to mankind, he abandoned Twitter when it displeased him. David Javerbaum, novelize us. Chapter 2. The Adventure Almost Begins. Novelized and narrated by David Javerbaum. The apartment is, in itself, nothing special. Just an ordinary 500-square-foot studio apartment. The kind that rents for, say, 1500 a month. Although the guy across the hall only pays nine fifty because his rent stabilized and he moved in the day of the Challenger explosion, which you know because every time you see him, he says, Do you know when I moved in? The day of the Challenger explosion. And the disrespect showed the seven astronauts who died never ceases to infuriate you. But I digress. What makes this apartment special is its contents. It is stuffed floor to ceiling with technology, or as it is known in the American South, technology. Serpentine cables coil everywhere, winding up and around the legs of desks and couches like a hundred cobras trying to mate with furniture. The tabletop is overflowing with jerry-rigged computer equipment scavenged from offices and repair shops, all of it laying still, exposed, vulnerable, like an anesthetized patient on an operating table, except no doctor is loudly mocking the size of the equipment's penis. And at the center of this high-tech sprawl, asleep in front of a computer screen, is our hero, Neo, who looks exactly like John Wick. Neo's dream about electric sheep, blatantly plagiarized from Philip K. Dick, is suddenly ended by a beeping sound coming from his computer. Barely awake, he gazes at the screen and sees the words, Wake up, Neo. At first he believes it to be merely the brand name of a new Hawaiian computer, Wake Upa Neo. But then, realizing no such computer exists, and that that thought was stupid, he grows puzzled. 
He hits Control X, but the letter T appears. What? He says, with an upwards glissando of a full octave on the ah. Uh? He hits another button, and H appears. Then another button, and another, and another, and another. What the hell? He asks, although no one else is there, and I am a conscientious author who never interferes with the events of the narrative. He hits the button ESC, short for Escalade, a popular SUV manufactured by Cadillac, and another message appears. Follow the White Rabbit. He hits ESC again, and the message repeats, followed by another. Knock, knock, Neo. Just as he was dreading the knock-knock joke his phantom interlocutor was seemingly about to tell, an actual knock on the door almost makes him jump out of his chair. Who is it? Neo asks. Choi, responds the man, somehow choosing, among all the hundreds of thousands of words available to him, the only one that was also his name. Neo opens the door to find Choi there with several of his friends. You're two hours late. I know, it's her fault. You got the money? Two grand. Those lines were said by Neo, Choi, Neo, and Choi, respectively. I probably should have mentioned that at the, uh, at the time. Choi hands him the money, and Neo soon returns with a computer disc. Hallelujah, shouts Choi. You are my savior, my own Jesus Christ. No, Troy, Neo is not your own personal Jesus Christ. Only Jesus Christ is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Redeemer who shall return to judge the living and the dead, including you, Troy. Something wrong, man? asks Troy. You ever had the feeling that you're not sure if you're awake or still dreaming? asks Neo. No, that's stupid and you're stupid, says Troy. Pitying his dumbass friend, Troy asks Neo to come with him to a party. At first, Neo declines. But then he notices one of Choi's friends is wearing a black motorcycle jacket with pins of symbols, slogans, medals, and a white rabbi. Rabbit. Rabbit. Sorry. Neo accompanies them to a party at another apartment. The rent on this one is 1900 which for a two-bedroom in that neighborhood is actually pretty good, especially since it still has the original floors. While the rest of the partygoers talk and flirt and play categories. In this case, the category is Ancient Greek Philosophers, and the first letter is Alpha. Neo stands against a wall, sipping a bottle of beer, alone, out of place, a square peg in a hole that was also square, but smaller than the peg and therefore incapable of accommodating it. Suddenly, he notices a woman staring at him. A hot woman. You will have to say that now, that a woman is hot? I mean, I, I'm not objectifying her. I'm just trying to add some, you know, narrative color. I mean, she's a lot more than hot obviously she's smart and she's anyway the woman is trinity and she walks straight up to him hello neo she says how do you know my name he asks i know a lot about you she answers i've been wanting to meet you for some time man just once i'd like to have a girl come up to me and say she's wanted to meet me for some time if that ever happened you know what i'd say I, i'd be like yes who are you asks neo my name is trinity replies Trinity, duh. Trinity? The Trinity? The Trinity that cracked the IRS database? See, now she's not the hot girl. She's the brilliant hacker girl. It doesn't even matter what she looks like. She could even be ugly, which some girls are. Boys, too. I'm just saying. Was that you or my computer? Asks Neo. She nods. How did you do that? Asks Neo. None of your fucking business, says Trinity. Right now, all I can tell you is you're in danger. They're watching you. Who? Please, just listen. I know why you're here, Neo. I know what you've been doing. I know where you live and what time you get home and which rooftop provides a clear shooting angle through your apartment window. And I know why, night after night, you sit at your computer. You're looking for him. You are looking for him. Masturbating to internet porn, but then looking for him. By now, their bodies were against each other's her lips so close to his ear that if he had any hair sticking out of his ear, it would have poked them. But he was 30, and ear hair usually doesn't start until you're around, like, 45. I know, because I was once looking for the same thing. But when he found me, he told me I wasn't really looking for him. I was looking for an answer. Her voice was hypnotic, and Neo could feel her words seeping into his body 
like sludge through a centrifuge. It's the question that drives us, the question that brought you here. What is the Matrix? Correct. Okay, I'll take 90s movies for 800. Wait, what? Are we playing Jeopardy? I don't know, are we? Never mind, says Trinity. When I asked him, he said that no one could ever be told the answer to that question, so that it wouldn't work on Jeopardy. What? Like, when he says the answer, does he actually mean the answer or the question? What are you talking about? I'm just saying if he means the answer, he needs to frame it in the form of a question. No, Neo, because the answer is out there. Okay, but see, in that case, the question would be, where is the answer? And then the answer would be out there. Neo, if you're our savior, we're not worth saving. Thank you, David. Each week on the show, we sit down with someone who worked behind the scenes on the film The Matrix. Kevin, let's roll that tape. All right. uh, We are here today with Lord Kravt, who is the Matrix intimacy um, curator, choreographer, however you want to do it. I'll I'll let her explain it. Uh, Laura, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. So so how do you properly say what it is you do on uh, what you did on the set of The Matrix? I'm a Matrix coordinator. So... That was a lot easier than what I did. I, I, I did a whole thing, and it's just Matrix coordinator. Look, it's um, it's a tricky field. It's very limited. It's not as well known as a lot of the other uh, crew jobs. So that's not that's not surprising. Understandable. I, um, glad you're here today. Um, so for those who don't know, what is a Matrix coordinator? Basically, it's my job. It's my honored responsibility and joy to be the person responsible for making sure that the actors are comfortable with the Matrix. The Matrix is, uh, it's everywhere. It's all around them. It's, you know, part of the movie. It is the movie. It's around the movie. It's under the movie. It's the cameras in the movie. It's the actors in the movie. It's the story of the movie. But it's also the movie. It's the Matrix. It's everywhere. If if I'm being honest, um, that was actually better explained. Yeah than anything Lawrence Fishburne said in the movie itself. Thank you. When he played the role of Morpheus, I worked with Lawrence for a long time on this because he didn't quite understand. It's 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 everywhere. And I, he kept saying, you know, what about my shoe? I said, yes, that's the Matrix. And he would say, well, this dog over there. Yes, that's the Matrix. I'm eating a hot dog. Yes, that's the Matrix. We are in the Matrix. We are the Matrix. How do you get comfortable with it? And the secret that no one ever talks about is you never will. You never will. So, so how was it like, because, and then that, maybe I could be wrong, but it, it just seemed like Lawrence Fishburne didn't do a good job of explaining what the hell the Matrix was. I left the, the movie theater still confused, still confused about what was happening. How, so like, did he do a good job in your eyes or what, or is there still some holes missed? Um, well, Kevin, I thought he did a wonderful job because I coached him. So for you to leave the theater, not knowing, I'm not going to say it was you as a viewer, your responsibility, the onus being on you, but, um. I thought he did a really good job. He said the Matrix is everywhere. He said it. He said it in the movie. He said it on the set. He said it to his friends. He said he he talked about it with his family. The Matrix is everywhere. And he understood that. So, you know, I got a Reddit that says, you know, asking what is the Matrix? And a lot of people are following it and they're commenting on having the same concern, not knowing what the Matrix is. Um, But, but it's okay, you know, because you're here and you're the coordinator and yeah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe, maybe the, 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 the one million people that follows the Reddit, maybe we're the dumb ones, right? You know, maybe we're stupid. Um, so it makes sense. I, I, let me ask you this. Did you see the movie in a theater? You, you did? Yes, I saw it in the theater, yes. Okay, that was The Matrix. Did you eat popcorn? Yes. That was The Matrix. Did you drive home in a car? Yeah, I rode, I rode home in a car, passenger seat, yes. Yeah, Matrix. Was it on a highway or service streets? Uh, a little bit of both. Yep, Matrix. So you were in the Matrix, and that might be why you were having a hard time understanding what the Matrix was. It's because you were in it. You're in it now. This is the Matrix. We are in the Matrix. And basically, that's kind of all you have to understand. That's my job. Yeah. You, you, you're kind of seeing it in a nutshell. You're feeling it in a nutshell. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I get it. You know, so everything around me is Matrix. You know, that. I, I mean, I'm here. I'm here now. Um, what got you involved? Like, what made you want to explore and understand the Matrix? I can tell you the day I realized I was in something. I didn't have a name for it yet. I was nonverbal at that moment. I was laying in a crib. I remember there was a ray of sunshine 
that came through the window mm -hmm. and fell upon me. And there were dust particles in that window, or in that in that ray of light. And I thought, this is something. I'm in something. And from that point on, as I learned how to walk, talk, uh, read, write, uh, roller skate, skateboard, etc., I would always think, I'm in something. There is something. Something all around me. I'm on the sidewalk. I'm I'm in, in recess. I'm going to college. I'm at a bar. I'm drunk. What, wherever it was, I would think I'm in something. And then when the Wachowskis wrote their tome and I, you know, they found me, they, they were looking for somebody who was aware that they were in something and they heard about me. And then they said, um, would it work if the thing that you were in was the matrix and uh, everything clicked together? And I said, yeah, absolutely. I'm not working. Uh, and you know, it's hard to work when you realize you're in something everywhere, you know, and, uh, that's how I got my first job. It didn't, I, I will say it didn't go really well. I, I wasn't in the follow-ups because I'd like to say because my job was, I explained my job so well in the first that after that. There was no need to explain it. Everybody got it. They got it. Yeah. They were in the matrix. My job was done and I think I did a pretty, pretty good job. That's a, so. that's, that's, that's very good detail. I, I appreciate that. Um, when I, when I, when I, when I think about the matrix, like, you, you know, so you say everything's in the matrix. I actually got in trouble one time with that mindset. And I, and for the longest, um, I was blaming Lawrence Fishburne for it. You know, for, for explaining to me what the matrix was. So I thought I knew what it was. And I was dating this girl and she came over one time and there was another girl at my house. And I told her, I said, listen, this isn't real. This is the matrix. I'm not cheating on you. This is the matrix you're in. And she and she, and she punched me. And, and I don't think she understood what the matrix was. But it, 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 didn't, it didn't work for me that time. And I was mad at Lawrence Fishburne for a solid 15 years. Did you try to bend the matrix or were you just sort of explaining to her that she was in the, if you had tried, I'm sorry, I wasn't there because I would have been very helpful. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to bend the matrix. And in that case, I would have recommended bending the matrix and maybe even putting a hole in the matrix so that you could have the situation with one person basically slide through the situation of the other person without either of them knowing yeah. that the situations were occurring, Yeah, which you do, but you know, you, you have to, you, it's not just something that happens. You have to think about it. Yeah. I, I, that's how I live my life. I think about it a lot. The other day I went to the mall and, uh, there was a very, very small parking space and I have a compact car, a hybrid, not to brag. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I got my car into that space because of the matrix. And then I got myself out of the car. I had to enter exit out of the, uh, the back, um, flip up a uh, hatchback, but I did it because of the matrix. So, so, so are you, are you, are you, you know, saying the, the 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 parking space that was there that your car fit in to the parking space you're saying that wasn't the fact that you you're 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 crediting the matrix for that in the matrix is the so it seems like you're using the phrase the matrix as if it's a god or something where it controls all and sees all and is all is, is that is that a correct statement that I'm saying I would say the god a god is in the matrix wow okay yep 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 that that tracks that tracks. The track? Mm -hmm. Are you getting it now? Yeah. That, Kevin, are you no, I, I, I mean, this? I'm not getting it, but I'm getting it. You know, so I'm, I'm getting it. I'm, de I'm definitely getting it. That's it. Yeah. That's getting it. Not getting it is getting it. It's the matrix. You're in the matrix. Bend it. Play with it. Have fun with the matrix. That's what I tell people. Yeah. Keanu, I call Keanu, have fun with the matrix. And he is having a blast with it. He still uses it all the time. I can tell. Mm -hmm. I'm not in contact with him, but I, I see him on the internet. I see him in magazine pages and you can tell he's enjoying the matrix. He's never left. It. Was there, was there anybody on set that you felt like they just, they, they couldn't, they couldn't wrap their head around it and then they couldn't fully embrace what, what was happening. Was there anybody like that? Or you think everybody just, everybody was just cool with the matrix. There was one person who was very hard to get through to. Uh, Joe Pantaleone. Mm -hmm. I'm not I'm pronouncing his last name correctly. Um, he was very difficult. I don't know if it was most people's mindsets can take in the matrix, mm -hmm. but occasionally there's somebody who through like a long and storied either nature or nurture, nobody really knows exactly which one. They just aren't able to take mm -hmm. it in. And he wasn't able to take it in. He wore goggles. He was able to say pithy lines. He could not take in the matrix, and I'll always feel sorry for him about that because he's really missing out. So, where where's your line when you when you say, okay, this person just isn't going to get it? What like because you seem like a type of person that you know that you can make anybody a believer. So, so the fact that he didn't get it, what what struck to you to where it's like he he just won't get it? What what, what happened? You can tell it's one of those things. Um, you probably have to be you, you have to be very knowledgeable mm -hmm. to understand when you spot it, but. I would say it's mostly his eyes because his mouth was saying, oh, I get it. I understand. It's not that tough. It's just everywhere. I get it. And I said, even that, that sort of flippancy, uh -huh. 
that Pasha, it's just the matrix, is an indicator that you don't understand the matrix. So Okay, yeah, make, makes sense. I tried to show him on every level the intimacy of the matrix. Uh-huh. I went to his trailer. I knocked on the door a lot. He, he couldn't even answer the door uh, after repeated knockings. And I took a little, I would take naps on the steps of his trailer. He couldn't even open them. That's how much he didn't understand the matrix. Uh, he asked people to keep me away from him. That means to me that he didn't understand the matrix. You know, there were there were several signs. There were red flags, if you will. Yep, red flags. Um, mm-hmm. Who created the matrix? Well, that's the great unknown, isn't it? Isn't it? I just feel like somebody with with your um, expertise on you know, and on the, the the matrix and stuff. I, I felt like because I feel like every everything has a creator, and I just you know just just for the listening listeners out there, I just thought you know, and that maybe something. You would know um, unless there's a situation where, you know, you do know and you can't say, which is fine as well. But, you know, it's the, it's the viewers who wants to know. I think that even the questioning of yeah. uh, what is the matrix, who is behind it is fear based because there's sort of like, uh, what if it's somebody I know? What if it's my arch nemesis from junior high? What if it's, uh, you know, my old boss who I who doesn't like me because I dropped a vat of frying oil on the floor? Any of these people, you know, could be the person or the entity behind the matrix. So I really think it's best not to question too deeply and rather to take, choose the path of acceptance. Just accept it. So, so, so that's where I'm getting because, and I think that's where my, my, my stupidity lies because I felt, I'm not saying which I felt Lawrence Fishburne was telling us in the movie, question everything. Are you breathing air? Is this air you're breathing? How do you know? Question it. You know, but now you're saying, mind your business. Don't question nothing. Just let it happen. I would say one of the, if the matrix was to have a motto, Mm -hmm. I would say that that motto would be mind your business. Okay. Just mind your business. Don't worry about it. Don't count other people's matrixes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Don't, don't count it. You know, let, let, let them have their matrixes. Yeah. Live in your matrix. Okay. Because it's everywhere and it's everything. Earlier today I was, I was peeling an apple. Mm -hmm. And I, I snagged a little bit of my fingernail matrix. That's not just because you was pulling too hard? Nope. I wish it was. That would that would be a great explanation, but it's the matrix. So so you so has there been anything that has happened in your life that at one point you questioned the matrix where you was like, is this real or is this this can't be the matrix? The matrix wouldn't do this to me. This can't be the matrix. Or have you always been a blind believer? The only time I've ever questioned the matrix was when I wasn't invited back to the sequel to The Matrix. And I thought to myself, I don't understand it. This is the movie that is named for the concept that I understand the best. And yet somehow, they're not asking me back. And and I was confused. And I asked, went down the path of asking everybody I'd ever met on that movie, are you going back? I'm not coming back. Is there a reason I'm not coming back? And I would call them and I, and I, would, I would write them letters and I would... Uh, and I would do everything. I would show up at places I knew that they frequented. And they they eventually said, just live in the matrix and let us live live in your matrix and we're going to live in our matrix and please, please stop coming into our matrix. And I thought, okay, I can respect that, I guess. It's hard to understand. I'm grappling still, mm-hmm. but I, I can accept it. Yeah, and I'm sorry that it happened to you because based on your conversation, you have a wealth of knowledge about the matrix. And like I said, like, well, I, I'm, I'm truly sincere about this. I'm sorry that happened to you. Um, but I wanted to bring some up to you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the, I'm in the business and I'm, I'm writing screenplays and writing scripts and everything like that. Um, and I have an idea for a, a movie. Um, and I didn't really, I didn't know what the, the, the full name of the movie would be, but now I know. Because I was already going to call a movie called The Matrix. I was going to call it The Matrix, but now we have like a little tagline. It's the Matrix lures revenge, you know. And I feel it can be like a sci-fi horror, mm-hmm. horror com, like a like a horror, horror. comedy. Please, please, uh, please say horror. Horror, because otherwise, okay, horror. H- horror. Yeah. Like like it's like very close. That's, that's not like it's like it sounds like it's a horror doing horror things. But I'm I'm in like a horror movie. Thank you. May I? May I recommend a, re- a retitling? Yes, 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 just, yes, please. Just The Real Matrix. The Real Matrix. Oh. The Real Matrix. Lore's Revenge. Lore's Revenge, sure. I, I really like the Lore's Revenge part. I'm sorry. I just, it, it, it's gold. I think it's gold. I love it. Okay. 
I mean, the real Matrix, Lord of Revenge. And then you can you can kind of run the whole thing. You know, so you're you're the consultant. You run everything. You let people know what's going on. We we'll go into the Matrix. We'll sit there for a little bit, chill, relax, have a Manhattan. You know. And 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 really and really and really indulge, you know, say in the matrix and stuff. Kevin, are you being sincere? Is this really happening? I, 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 listen, I I I I I am a visionary. I have ideas up here, and I just need I just need a place to let it go, right? I I, I just need a door, and I'll walk through it. It's okay. I'll walk. I just need the door. I would really um I really could use that right now. I could use being in that that movie with you. That would be amazing. I I accept this deep and amazing. Challenge is potential for a life that will finally be fulfilled. I accept this challenge with great gratitude. I, I appreciate it. I, I, I guess the Matrix just took over in me. You know, it was, it was it was the Matrix that was doing that. It wasn't me. It was the Matrix. You know, I was like, your, your time is now. I, I I say we do this. I I I do have a car, as as I stated a little braggly earlier. I could make it out to you if you could just send me a detailed um, map of where you live and how I could get there, and uh, and I will see you very shortly. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's why. I mean, I mean, I feel there was there's more to go into the into the movie, but if you want to come on over, you know, saying so that that'd be that, that'd be great, you know. So I got a I got a one bedroom half bath. I, I take showers outside when it rains. That would be my honor. That would be my most heartfelt honor. Truly, I, I appreciate it. We, we well we we got something going we got something going well i want to uh yeah i want to thank you for joining us for uh this interview it was great to get to know you and i i'm pre i am appreciative of your knowledge on the matrix thank you it was a real pleasure to meet you and i will see you very very shortly very shortly. very shortly within the next day or two less if i i think i have a way i can drive some back roads very quickly so you'll see me very soon all right um uh, all right that's all for us here uh you guys take it easy that's our show for today. Thanks for joining. Join us next time for an incredible episode narrated by Critical Role's Matthew Mercer. Stephen, unplug us from the Matrix. Sure thing, Kevin. Thanks to this week's guests, David Javerbaum and Laura Kraft. The Novelizers is produced by me, Stephen Levinson, with Graham Douglas, Kevin Carter, Christine Bullen, Dennis DeClaudio, Rob Kuttner, and Suchatis Bokeel. Music by Cole Emhoff, art direction by Crystal Dennis. Theme song by Andrew Lynn, performed by Knotts. Special thanks to Wiseo Radio in Yellow Springs, Ohio. The Novelizers is a work of unauthorized parody. Follow The Novelizers on Instagram, Threads, Facebook, and TikTok. And please donate to our Patreon. Write to us at thenovelizers at gmail.com. Copyright 2024, Novelizers, LLC. Take us out, Amy Mann. There was a matrix made of computers. There was a guy all of the bullets he lived in fluid just like a fetus but he was born again like baby Jesus Namo